Hi, sir. Oh, well, Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome back. It's a first podcast, first discussion. I won't pull it, call it a podcast. First discussion of uh, mm -hmm. New Year. And uh, I wanted to ask you one question. And this question is specific to the incoming budget. This uh, budget will be the last uh, full budget of uh, Modi ji's government's second term. Uh, maybe uh, he'll have a full budget again, uh, maybe next year. Next year, uh, otherwise, will be the interim budget. Next to next year, also, he can have or some other party may have the full budget. But that's not uh, <laughs> our point of discussion. Our point of discussion yeah. is... Uh, what is your wish list for uh, this year's budget when it comes to personal finance? Because this is going to be, I uh, think that uh, this should be a populist budget. Because again, okay. next year is uh, the election. So government may try to lure in uh, uh, the middle class voters because ultimately when it comes to personal finance, it mostly impacts uh, the middle class. Rich already has the money and poor have no concern about uh, what taxes government levies on them because they don't pay the taxes. Okay. So it's uh, more uh, cons uh, more concerning for uh, more related to the middle class population and they are more attuned and tuned in uh, this thing, personal finance. So what is your wish list and why you have put those things in your wish list? Okay, fine. I think the first of all, I am a numbers man. And uh, so I will try and put some figures into this in the discussions. Most of the figures obviously are uh, through Google. Oh, so uh -huh. figures obviously have to be correct. Okay. Uh, sure, uh, sure, second sure. important point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second important point is I am not expert. And whatever I have, we will be discussing four or five points will be based on whatever, you know, reading that we have done. And this is that, and this is whatever is the understanding of personal finance which I have. Okay, so I think the first point is very important in India. I, out of 140 crore people, only 8 crore to 9 crore people are the taxpayers, individual taxpayers. Okay, and that too, this figure has increased, doubled in the last, I would say, seven years, 2015 to 2021. If I remember 2014-15, there were 4 lakh four, four and a half lakh individual taxpayers. And today there are maybe eight to nine, sorry, four and four, four and a half crore individual taxpayers. And today there are around nine crore taxpayers, eight and a half, nine crore taxpayers. Now the most important point to understand is out of this nine crore taxpayers, only, only 1.5 crore individual people pay taxes. So out of a country of 140 crore, only 1.5 crore people actually pay taxes. So roughly 1%. Uh, roughly, yeah, 1%. And overall tax collected, direct tax, in, through income tax rather, is rather raw, was around 5 lakh crore uh, one year back. 5 lakh crore. So 5 lakh crore means every individual taxpayer approximately average pays around 3 lakh rupees of taxes. Average. If I look at, if I if we exclude the ultra-rich and very rich, then actually the middle class pays maybe not more than average again, 1 lakh rupees as a tax. Okay. That to how many people pay? 1.5 crore. That's all. Now, despite this, I think when the budget discussion starts or budget is about to be presented, I think all of us are more interested in income tax. Yeah. As to what will be the provisions in income tax, what will happen? And to be frank with you, people just look at those two or three points in the budget. And after that, nobody understands or nobody wishes to understand what has happened in the budget. Okay. Yes, yes. That's the that's the that's the reality. And this is those two and three points. We make our opinion mm -hmm. as to budget is a good budget or a bad budget. Yes. But I think that's what it is for the last so many years, and it will continue so many years till government, you know, wishes to simplify the overall tax structure. Now, when that will happen, I don't know. Maybe in the next four years, five years. At least not, it should not, it will not happen this year or next year. That's for sure. Okay, so coming back to the wish list, 
I think there are only three or four major pointers which everybody will talk about. One obviously is the basic exemption limit. So the basic exemption limit, be it the old tax regime or the new tax, re tax regime for individual taxpayer is approximately 2.5 lakh rupees. So in other words, anybody who earns, who has a earning of 2.5 lakhs or lower will not pay any tax. Now this 2.5 lakh rupees limit of basic exemption has been revised around 10 years back. Now last 10 years, this basic exemption limit in the income tax laws is not revised at all. And I would say this is the time because 10 years now, if I look at inflation itself, average 7%. So overall, uh, the income of an individual, even if I assume 7% inflation, would have doubled very easily. There is something mm. called rule of 72. Mm -hmm. Rule of 72 is for doubling the income, 72 divided by the, uh, the tax rate or the interest rate, 7%. That means 10 years. Okay. So overall, income is obviously doubled. But the basic consumption limit is not doubled. So I would say the first wish list is, I think this, this budget, it should happen. Mm -hmm. 2.5 lakh rupees basic exemption limit to increase to rupees 5 lakh. lakh. Okay. Okay. Now so number one, happen? this is, if, yeah, this is number one is, uh, this list is uh, to increase the ex exemption limit to 5 lakh rupees. Yeah. Now if this happens, mm -hmm. it will basically leave a lot of disposable income in the hands of person, people, and it should help in boosting economy revival further oh, okay great, great. now obviously i am not an economist so how how much percentage it will boost etc etc it's a separate point altogether which i even i have to study i have to look into this okay uh the second point obviously standard deduction limit now standard deduction limit which is applicable in the old tax regime but has been done away with in the new tax tax regime is fifty thousand rupees of the fifty thousand rupees standard deduction limit is the same even if your overall taxable income is 5 lakhs or 50 lakhs or 1 crore. Now, ideally, it should be done as a percentage of the tax or of the income rather than a flat limit. Now, I don't think this will happen this year. This is my wish list. And this is the wish list of a lot of people, but I don't think it will happen this year because that will be too much of complication. So, I would say this is a wish list which happens fantastic. The third, Again, it's a big one, is Section 80C limit in the okay. old tax regime, which is 1.5 lakhs. So, Section 80C limit, which, you know, has, wherein one can do investments in uh, PPF, then EPF, and a lot of insurance policies, etc., etc. Everything is clubbed so, under one, it, uh, yeah, Section 80C, section 80C. and, yeah, and upper limit is 1.5 lakhs. It's a very big one. 1.5 lakhs, a big one. Now, this 1.5 lakhs, again, has been revised in 2014-15. If I remember last budget of uh, Mr. Manmohan Singh or the first budget of Mr. Modi. I don't remember when, but mm. it was 14-15, surely. Uh, so again, seven years or eight years have left. I have, 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 you know, have been done. Now, again, there is, a, there is a requirement of increasing this limit from 1.5 lakhs to maybe 3 lakhs or 2.5 lakhs this year. I think that is the third wish list. Section 80C limit, uh, one point deduction limit, 1.5 lakhs to be increased to maybe 3 lakhs. That is the fourth, third thing. Now, these three are quite basic, and these three, I would say, will be on the top of everybody's mind. The fourth one, yeah. No, 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 please, please, fourth, please, please. Uh -huh. Yeah, fourth one is uh, that is basically applicable for uh, the tax on EPL. Okay. So employee provident fund, if you are contributing more than 2.5 lakhs every year to EPS, the excess of amount contributed is that has to, I mean you have to pay tax as per your slab limit. It will be 30% mainly mm -hmm. in the old tax regime. Mm -hmm. Now again, idea of this is you know, this is this the wish list that I have, the wish that I have. Ideally, this has to be done away with, and when one withdraws EPF. Okay, when one when withdraws VPF, we can look at taxing some part of this as a on interest. Okay, as an interest, some part of this. This is the fourth wish list. Okay. Okay. Now the fifth wish list is section 80D limit, which is on medical. 
now as most of us have observed you know in the last 3 years in during covid mm -hmm. the medical bills of individuals have really shot up now the limit is 25000 for an individual or the family and 50000 for a senior citizen now this limit has to be clearly increased and if this limit is increased people will be you know forced to basically utilize this limit and go for mediclaim whether it's a personal mediclaim or as a company mediclaim. Okay, either way, we have to basically look at increasing the face value of the mediclaim mm -hmm. for this. Okay, if, if this is increased. So this is number five. One is, first is uh, basic exemption. Second is uh, standard deduction. Mm -hmm. Third is section Second. ATC. Then section oh. ATD. And then EPS. Five. The last one, okay, the sixth one I would say, is uh, basically on housing loan. Okay. okay. Now, housing That's loan, a major one. Constructing a, yeah, if you're constructing a housing loan, the interest on the housing loan, you can, you know, uh, use it in the tax benefit for the tax benefit for five years. Now, if your construction is extended for more than five years, it's only applicable for five years, the tax benefit. So, ideally, it should be increased to ensure that till your home loan, uh, the tenure is there. Mm -hmm. The the benefit should be applicable. Okay. The the seventh one, mm -hmm. the seventh one is the capital gains tax. Mm -hmm. Now, as some of us are aware, or most of us are aware right, right now, is that we have to pay a capital gains tax. Now, on a debt fund, debt fund, we have to pay capital gains tax after three years. Okay, that is a long term capital gains tax, and less than three years is short term capital gains tax. For equity fund, less than one year is short-term uh, capital gains tax and more than one year is long-term capital gains tax. Now, just to give an example, for a long-term capital gains tax on equity, that is equity mutual fund and uh, listed stocks, mm -hmm. we have to pay 10% capital gains tax on any capital gain more than 1 lakh, above 1 lakh. Now, if we really, if government wants to push people into mutual funds or even to equities, well, they can earn higher returns. Okay, then this capital gains tax has to be limit has to be changed. Long term capital gains tax limit has to be changed from one year to maybe five years or ten years. Okay, so these are the seven things I would say. <coughs> sorry, these are the wish list that as far as I have. I think most of the people that you will speak with will have maybe four or five same mm -hmm. same wish list and maybe yeah. two or three different wish lists. Looking at this uh, uh, business scenario world over, where uh, yeah. big companies are laying off manpower big time and decision is knocking the door at uh, uh, door of uh, most of the countries. Uh, Amazon recently laid off 18,000 people. Salesforce uh, laid off 11,000 people. Twitter laid off uh, half of its workforce or more than half of its workforce. Uh, Facebook also laid off around 18,000 manpower. Companies are, uh, Google is non-committal about um, having the recruited people on board, which uh, they hired during this COVID period. And uh, we don't know how many have been laid off in India, as far as Indian companies are concerned. And these are the waste lists definitely will be on uh, everybody's, uh, say, priority list. These are the number, uh, factors or uh, the wish will be on everybody's list. But if I request you to pinpoint that, okay, I think this will be out of these seven, these three, four, five will definitely be considered by government of India. More optimistic out I of think, the seven. Yeah, I think the uh, basic exemption limit, I would say, will surely be considered. Okay. Uh, another one is section ATC increase in limit, I think should be will be considered. Okay. I think EPF withdrawal... <coughs> Will be considered. Uh, capital capital gain tax. Capital okay. gains tax uh, may not be considered. I am not sure about it. Mm -hmm. But EPF withdrawal will be surely considered. And Section 80D mm -hmm. increase in the medical limit will be considered. So I think these four will be considered. That's what I feel. The basic exemption limit, uh, the EPF withdrawal, interest on EPF, tax on EPF withdrawal, mm -hmm. then Section 80C and Section 80D increase in limit. So all these four. I would say will surely be considered. Yeah. Okay. Great, sir.
thanks thanks for taking your time out and uh, having this chat with me thanks a lot and we'll again uh, come back uh, to our audience with uh, some new topic probably post budget analysis and even before that if i may uh, come up with a new question i'll definitely ping you yeah yeah sure mukul thanks thanks, thanks a lot sir thank you thank you sir